Hey there! In this video we are going to look at something called the ambiguous case of the sine law. A situation where you you have uh, some information about a triangle and there's actually two different possible triangles that you can create from that information. Let's look at that right now. Well the information that I have here is going to give us a situation where we have the ambiguous case of the sine law. In other words we're going to have actually two possible ways that you can draw the triangle for this. Since we don't actually see the triangle, we just have the information, uh, we're going to have to try and draw it ourselves here. So we're going to start by making an angle and then adding those other two sides. We have one angle here and we have two sides here. And the angle is not the one between the two sides. So I'll start with the angle here because we've got angle, side, and then side. Not that we want to write those letters together there, but that's another thing. I'll put a dotted line here and then I'm going to make approximately a 30 degree angle. And we'll draw the side B here. Now unfortunately this digital pen is not going to follow this virtual ruler very well but we can give it a try. It's not too bad. So this is angle A here. That's our 30 degrees. This is our side B here. It's 10. I drew it 10. Obviously on the screen you're watching it on. Probably something other than 10. Then we're going to draw this side A here. Now it has to be across from this. The reason I drew this thing as a dotted line is because I don't know how long that side is. The only thing I know is this angle here and this side here and then that's the other side that I'm going to put here. Now lots of people I find when you give them information like this they tend to draw the side like that to complete that triangle. Now that is one way to draw that triangle, but you could actually, instead of drawing it outward like this, you could draw it kind of going in more like this, which I will do right now here. That's also a triangle that fits that set of information, right? Because it's got an angle of 30, it's got a side of 10 next and then a side of 6 across from that angle of 30. So which one is it? Well, if you're given information like that and you don't have a triangle to look at, then it could be either one. So I'm first going to do the one that I had before and then we'll look at this one after. Because this angle here is the one that I'm going to try and find, the one across from B, because that's what I can do with the sine law is if I have A and A that go together and then I'm given B I can find the angle across from B which is this one but I'm going to draw this other one the first one that I drew because as we'll see when you use the sine law and you have the ambiguous case it's always going to give you this acute angle first and then you can use that information to find the other possibility so that was six and this is angle B here. If I'm going to set up my sine law to find this, I need to set up my proportion that says that sine A over A is equal to sine B over B. Now I'm going to do this down below here. All right, so we can write, I'll put the sine B first because that's what we're solving for. Sine B over B, which is 10, is equal to sine A, which is 30, divided by A, which is 6. If we're going to solve that proportion, multiply both sides by 10, and I've got sine B is 10 times sine 30, divided by 6. Now, I'm going to get the calculator to work that out, and then we can find what that angle is. All right, so if we put this expression in here, 10 sine... 30 divided by 6, we get that number. Now remember that that's what sine of B is. Sine of B was 0 0.83. I'll put a repeat so that I can say it's exactly equal to that there. Now if we want to find what B itself is, we're going to need to do sine inverse of that value. Sine inverse of 0.83 repeat that value and we will get what this B value is. So we'll go back to the calculator 
and we'll do sign inverse of that answer. I'm just going to say answer. It gives me, if we're going to the nearest degree, 56 degrees. So we'll say roughly 56 degrees. That is this angle in here, in that way of drawing that triangle. But as we said before, there was another way of drawing that triangle. If we go back up to our picture here, this was 56 degrees in here. But as I said before, the other way of drawing it would be as if this side went in like that and the triangle went that way. So if that was the case, if this went in this way, like that, you have to think carefully about this. Imagine a vertical line right down the middle here. This triangle right here is going to be an isosceles triangle. In other words, this angle and this angle would be the same. And that's the little trick we're going to use to find what the other possible angle is for this other possible triangle here. To find that angle, we're going to have to imagine this triangle being isosceles and using the fact that those angles are going to be the same. So if this angle is 56, then this angle would be 56. And that would leave 124 for this angle. So two possible triangles here. There's the first one I drew, which is this one where this side goes out like that and the angle across there that angle B is 56 and there's the one where this side goes in like this and you complete the triangle that way and the angle is 124 and it's not hard to find the angle as long as you understand why you're doing that if you find the first one it's always going to give you the acute angle and then this is just going to be subtracted from 180 because of that symmetry there between these two angles, right? Now this happened because the conditions that I started with happened to be just right to make it possible to draw two triangles. You're not always going to be able to draw two triangles. If you have this situation where you have an angle and a side and another side where the angles not between the two sides it's possible that you have two triangles that you can draw if it goes angle side side like that as opposed to a situation where you have two sides and the angle in between them that's not what we're talking about here we're gonna look in general at how you can decide whether there's two possible triangles or not based on just thinking about this here now I have this drawn in a uh, dynamic geometry uh, page here that I'm going to use instead because that's a lot easier to visualize what's going on. So we're going to create our side length B of 10 here. So we have a side that is 10. Now we're going to raise it up at the angle of 30 degrees like we had in the picture. There is 30 degrees. And we're going to make the other side 6 here. So it's just going to stick out there for now for 6. Now it's not going to complete the triangle like that, but I'm going to move this down until it just completes the triangle and hits that. So there's our one triangle that we had where this angle over here was 56 degrees roughly. But then of course there's this thing could swing in like this. If this swings in like this, you have this other triangle where we had roughly 124 degrees right there's kind of the I don't know if you want to call it this but the the Audi triangle where the side goes out and the any triangle where that side goes in like that if you have it drawn the way I have it drawn on the page here so then if we think about this how can we tell if there's going to be two triangles or not well a situation where uh, it's pretty obvious you won't have two triangles in fact you won't even have one triangle is if this thing was too short to even reach down to that other side there like if it was say that 2.6 or something like that this can't even reach the other side there there's no way to make a triangle out of this this is too short to reach that other side to complete the triangle if this thing is less than what this vertical height is here 
this vertical height here, which I'm actually going to show like that. There's the height. The vertical height there is 5. You can actually work that out with right angle trigonometry, which we'll do after on the other on the other whiteboard. If this is shorter than that height, there are no triangles. There's zero possible triangles. If this is bigger than that, then there's a couple of possible triangles like what we had there with that with that 6, there's that one and that one. If this is exactly the same as that, if I dial this back to 5, then there's only one triangle you can make here. And you might think about it, if this thing goes right down to there, there's one triangle that happens to be a right triangle, if that goes straight down like that. If that side A is exactly equal to that vertical height, then there's one triangle. Now there's one other case here. We've had, if this is way too short, there's no triangles. If this is longer than that height, it looks like there's two triangles. And if it's equal to that height, there's one triangle. There's actually one other situation here now. We're gonna have to make this a bit smaller so I can fit this on here. I'm gonna put this way out here. If this is, uh, I mean, this could be long enough here, but as uh, if I go to about there, you know, I got that triangle and I have this triangle. This is not going to look much like a triangle, but it actually is a triangle. But if this thing is too long here, if we go, if this is too long here, this is longer than that. Well, I can't make this work on this side. I can make it work on this side. I can make a triangle on this side. But if I try to swing this over here, it's too long to finish that thing off. You see? It doesn't reach the, it kind of collapses on itself before it makes a triangle. So our last situation here is if this side A is longer than B, then there's only one triangle you can have as well. So there's lots going on there. There's lots going on. There's way too short to even reach. There's exactly the, the right length to reach. And then there's one triangle that right triangle, there's longer than that height, longer than this height, but shorter than this length over here. Then you have your two, one, two. That's the ambiguous case. The ambiguous case is when this is longer than the height, but shorter than that. And then that last situation was the last one we looked at there when this is longer, when A is actually longer than B, then there's only one way it can be here. And there's only that OD triangle, not the INE triangle. All right, let's summarize that on the other page. So we have those four different cases there. If we draw our thing the way we had it there, this was B. This is angle A over here. And this is our vertical height here. We're going to call that H. Before I draw the rest of this thing here, since that's a right angle, we're going to think about what H is in terms of a and B because we're going to use that later. If you know your right angle trigonometry, sine of A is opposite over hypotenuse here. So we got H over B. And that would lead you to believe that H is equal to B times sine of A. We're going to use that in a minute here. Now, if we're looking at our various situations here, we had the first situation where you had this side was shorter, where this side A was shorter than H. So if A is less than H, then you have no triangle. We're going to say too short. Then we have our second situation here where this side A was exactly equal to the height, where A was equal to H. There was just one right, I'll put in brackets, triangle. And that's when it went straight down. Then we had our situation here where we had, this thing was longer than H, but shorter than B, and you could draw this two ways to make two of those triangles. So this is the key one here. It has to be longer than H. So I'm going to write it this way. A has to be bigger than H. But as we said, it has to be shorter than B. 
has to be shorter than this to be able to, to draw this one that goes in like that. That was two triangles. And we'll put here, not very technical terms, but any and Audi. I'll put quote marks just to show they're not technical terms there. And then the last situation was when, when this side was longer, when A was longer than B. If A is longer than B, then you can't make it go in because it's too long. So this is A is bigger than B. One, I guess we'll say here non-right triangle. And that one is just the Audi triangle, just the one that where the side goes out like that. Now this term ambiguous case, the word ambiguous means you can't tell between more than one thing. This is the situation where you have the ambiguous case because there's two possible triangles. What I highlighted in yellow, that situation where you can draw those two, where you have those two, that's the ambiguous case. Now, if we're going to put it in terms of um, not just H here, if we're going to put this, uh, you can replace every single one of these H's with B sine A. So instead of this H, I could put B sine A. Instead of this H, I could put B sine A. Instead of this H, I could put B sine A. All right, that situation right there, that's the condition for which there's two possible triangles and you have the ambiguous case.